All right, guys, I just want to show you this boot washing station. This man can't. They really care about our boots. You see how often it's used based on uh, all that brown water coming out. I guess it's also a uh, lower pants washing station in my case. And then scrub them off. How about that? Good as new, huh? Finally off that job and back here at, at the main man camp that we're at. And just wanted to show you the filth level of the mud man and this filth that hides under the keeper. And in those holes, you can see. So, you definitely need to scrub those nooks and crannies. That's what I was talking about. And on the Bertucci, you kind of see where it's getting sweat stained already. A little dingy in the corner, but I mean, I like that look. I don't mind it. A few scratches here on the buckle, some gouges already on that protector, and scrapes and the steel on the side but I still like it anyways gonna do some laundry and shower up and then afterwards I'll tell you about some uh, more of the tough tests I put the, these watches through alright looking for where I hid my laundry detergent last time I was here I don't see it Atlanta Braves. This has got to be Tyler's. Guys, okay, this washer is saying it's going to take 66 minutes. And fortunately, the GW9500, I can set the timer for one hour and six minutes, which is something you cannot do on the GBDH2000. All right, so I pulled the GBDH2000 out of my bag and I want you guys to remember that going to the timer, there it is, alright so we want to set it so we hold down the rev button, hold on I got a phone call, alright I'm back, you have to hold down the rev button and it will underline the number you want to change and it doesn't go by the digit it goes by the whole number which is stupid so you keep on pressing forward to increase that numerical value so going from 23 to 60 is going to take 37 button presses okay watch this 60 minutes that's it, right? You want to go more? It goes all the way back around to zero. Alright, so I can't even run the timer. Have this timer tell me when the washing machine's done. Alright? Excuse me, washing machine. Anyways, the, G, the GW9500, see how it's set for one hour and six minutes. That was 66 minutes. I mean, all right, gentlemen, so episode four of the Beater Watch vlog. You know, today that I'm going to talk about has to do with resistance to chemicals, okay? So it's another attribute of, you know, your blue-collar work watch where you don't want Bray Cleaner to dissolve your watch, okay? And I'm showing you the Bertucci now because it's made of metal, all right? So... You know, there's always the risk of corrosion, but I think that metal has more resistance to, to solvents, okay? And I have a story today that, you know, something that happened to me on the drive back, which uh, highlights that, okay? But first, we'll pull up the mud man. So yeah, it has mud resist, but the question is, how resistant is it to chemicals and solvents? Uh, grease from your burrito, you know, stuff like that that you're going to encounter during a work day. And, you know, maybe some like really harsh solvents, like even stronger than brake cleaner, could dissolve this. But here's the thing Casio 
is really selling this G-Shock with its bioresin, okay? And, you know, every, every environmental thing is always less quality. You know, think of ultra-low sulfur diesel. It's a worse diesel than, you know, regular diesel with sulfur, okay? For a, a number of reasons. Lubrosity is one of them, but, you know, the temperature at which it burns... And then, you know, with the cars, you had ethanol. It's like, oh, it's a special gasoline. It's, it's, it's so good for the environment. And, and on older cars, it ruins a lot of the seals and the, you know, the uh, uh, rubber components, right? So <sighs> I'm a little hesitant about the biomass, you know? I know that I'm, I'm not on board with environmentalism. I think it's all stupid and, like, just regular market solutions are, are much better for the environment. But this does, I mean, just based on the field test, it does feel very rugged, okay? I'm going to be honest with you guys. Let me grab the GBDH 2000. I was a little apprehensive because this band is more rubbery, you know, because it's a fitness watch. So, it you know, it's very flexible. And so every time that, that I was going to, encounter you know solvents or chemicals you know i was like oh man this is a 400 hundred dollar g-shock watch i really like it i hope it doesn't get ruined you know especially with the optical sensors on the back i'd always be wondering if if chemicals i encounter are going to ruin this watch and so that's why i was happy to get uh the the mud man for work right but i, I still have questions about the bioresin all right uh, so today, uh, I was driving back from, from the job that I've been on, you know, north of Carlsbad and I'm, and I'm driving the truck away and I look at, at, at the fuel gauge and it says quarter and I was at 25% full and I was like, wow, this, this, this truck really eats through the diesel. And it was an older Western star that had, you know, one of those old Detroit diesels. I love those old Detroit diesels. You know, like the ones actually made out of like uh, uh, cast iron. You know, the the uh, steel, like not these like uh, European aluminum ones, right? So, anyways, uh, like I'm doing the math in my head, and I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm gonna swing by the truck stop in, in Eunice for breakfast, anyways. So, I have plenty of fuel, you know. Like, I always figure, as a rule of thumb, five miles a gallon, right? Just to be safe. And I'm at a quarter tank. And so I'm thinking, no problem. But as I'm driving along, like, the needle is going down, right? And, and it's kind of causing me to wonder if there's a problem. And whenever there's something funky going on with, with, the, with, the, uh, with the fuel gauge, I'm always suspicious that the air vents are blocked, on the tanks that help help the uh, you know the uh, the fuel to settle to equalize between the two tanks, right? And and so finally, I, I just had to pull over because the gauge started hitting like zero. And I pulled over and I looked in the tanks, and yeah, there was there was like by my estimation, plenty of fuel to get to the truck stop. But it was really bothering me that, that the fuel gauge was reading so low. So I did inspect the, uh, the little vents atop the, uh, the tanks. And sure enough, one of them was like, was clogged with dirt, which happens a lot when you're driving off-road like we do. Uh, so I wasn't that far from the truck stop, but I was thinking, man, I, I ought to put some, a few security gallons of diesel in the truck. And so... You know, I hauled uh, oil field equipment, which is pretty much, you know, like, you know, just it's all diesel engines, right? So I had diesel tanks on, on my trailer because it was, it was oil field equipment. You know, it's a pump. And, and the way that I got the fuel is I got a nice clean bucket and I got an empty bottle of water and just reached in into the diesel tank and gloop, 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 filled up the... Uh, the bottle and put it in the bucket and just dumped a few buckets into the into the truck all right so i use my right hand right so this 
this watch got diesel all over it. My hand was just covered in diesel. And, and it held up well. You know, it didn't, the diesel didn't dissolve any of the plastic components like the guard. And I've not seen any problem with the band, this Tridura band. And of course the metal's fine, right? And the glass wasn't harmed in any way by the diesel. So, the Bertucci Construction King is diesel proof. And, you know, I got some diesel on the Mudman. It wasn't, it wasn't submerged like this one was. But, uh, you know, this, the band and the watch held up to diesel. Okay, so we'll see how well this, these watches hold, hold up to, you know, other chemicals besides diesel. And I know some of you are wondering, why, well, why didn't I just subject the Mudmaster to the diesel? Well, the thing is, this is another issue is that look how look how proud the 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 mud man stands off the wrist it's pretty thick right and this is a lot closer i could barely like reach my hand into the into the hole to the for the diesel tank you can still see where it got all scraped up right and this is a kenworth style diesel tank so the opening is much larger and is a screw top like the all the other diesel tanks i would never be able to get my hand in to, to fill up a water bottle by going glug, 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 glug. And I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are like, ooh, ooh, I'm telling IFTA. Okay, well, listen. All right, we paid the fuel tax on on the fuel that, that goes into the pump, all right? So, you know, I don't want IFTA, like, kicking down my door at 4 a.m. with some, you know, no-knock search warrant because they're thinking that I'm using off-road diesel. This wasn't off-road diesel. This was, you know, regular diesel. It could go, it can go in the truck or the equipment, all right? So all you IFTA narcs, calm down, okay? Anyways, this, this watch had a much better chance of me getting my arm in, which it barely did. All right, and uh, this one was no chance, right? Too thick. So, uh, chemical resistance is another attribute of a blue collar work watch or a beater watch that we should all be thinking about. You know, what kind of, what are you exposed to? I mean, even if you're, you know, if, even if you're a cook, you're exposed to like splattering grease, right? And you know, in the oil field, this, we're, you know, we're exposed to all different sorts of slimes and chemicals and various messes, okay? So, I was really dirty, as you could see earlier when I was cleaning my boots, and we get splashed with a lot of stuff. I don't even know what it is. But, anyways, that's the subject of today. Get some other interesting stuff here. Don't forget about the, uh, what is this, the Lux Stream flashlight right so this is the end table that that i have it set on so there you go all right so tomorrow we're going to be going out there again rising up bright and early and we'll subject these watches to some more torture tests of all sorts some of them you know unimaginable by casio engineers like who a casio tests their watch for you know, the grease out of your breakfast burrito. You know, like imagine all of the chorizo, egg, and cheese running down your arm, getting all into the buttons of your watch. You know, do they torture test watches like that at Casio? Okay, probably not. But out here in West Texas, we, we for dad gum sure do, right? And, uh, and you know, like, uh, and I also want to address, I've been getting a lot of really good comments. And, you know, I'm sitting here, I got my phone, I'm reading the comments, and the problem is that YouTube is like, is making it really difficult to know like what your guys' usernames are. I don't know if you noticed, but in the comments, sometimes they use what username you've put in, like your name, sometimes they use like the alphanumeric one that YouTube assigns, and it's really confusing me. So I'm gonna go over some of these comments I got. I got some really great ones, and I'm thinking, some of them are so good, like, I could, I could just read the comment, and that would be, like, like a video, you know, like, like, one guy dropped a comment comparing this, this Mudman 
to the range man and he made a list of the pros and cons of each of them and you know that that breakdown is fantastic right so i'm thinking of doing like a video you know with like like just reading that comment not editing at all not hi i'm jim here's a comment just reading the comment with like with like music and each bullet point that the commenter made have like you know like trumpets you guys know what i mean like like a fanfare like a whole bunch of trumpets all right i'm not saying that i am going to be playing the trumpets i mean i don't know maybe they, they could be keyboard trumpets but all right maybe not everybody's on board with the trumpets okay maybe it, it, rather than explain it i should just make it and then you know one day you'll see like you know a notification that a, jim kincaid has uploaded a video and it's like you know range man versus mud man and then in parentheses trumpets or maybe no trumpets in the parentheses it just stealthily add trumpet i just want a fanfare after every every bullet point anyways okay so uh listen guys i love the comments thanks for all all the input and all the great ideas and uh we'll work on some more uh torture tests for these watches if you guys have any questions you know just drop them drop them down below all right i'm jim kincaid thanks for watching all right so this was tyler's hat all right tyler didn't want it so it didn't fit right and then i could have it all right well I'll take it. The the Braves they, they can be my National League team. But the problem is that you on the last rung didn't fit my squash, so I'm gonna see if one of my boys wants this one. This is a nice hat.